founded more than a century ago from humble origins, L'Oréal is now the world's biggest beauty products company. Specializing in cosmetics, hair and skin care, it boasts an international portfolio of 34 brands and has a market cap of more than 105 billion euros. At the helm, a man who's dedicated his entire career to the company. Over four decades, he's covered all facets of the business. Today, on Leaders with L'Aqua, we meet Jean-Paul Agon, chairman and CEO of L'Oréal. Monsieur Agon, thank you so much for speaking to Bloomberg. Pleasure. What happened to L'Oréal in the last 10 years? Innovation, your share price has grown. Was it exciting times? Yeah, very exciting. You know, I started as a CEO uh, 10 years ago. It has been uh, 10 years very exciting. Of course, we had a crisis in uh, 2008 and 9. But globally, the, the business has been very good. Uh, we have been growing, uh, acquiring brands, uh, launching new products, uh, gaining market shares everywhere in Europe, uh, USA, China. No, very exciting, fantastic. What's been the most fun? In fact, the most fun has been the, uh, the past uh, three, four years, uh, because thanks to the digital revolution, everything has been transformed. And as I tell my teams, I think that uh, this industry, our business, our company has more changed in the past three years than in the previous uh, 30 years. So it's an amazing time, extremely exciting. So is this the way you sell or is it the way that people actually look at makeup? No, in fact, it's, a, it's the relationship between brands and consumers. Uh, in fact, the digital has completely transformed the relationship between the two. Uh, before that, you know, the brands were uh, talking to consumers, uh, pushing uh, towards them information or, or whatever. But now the, the consumer has taken the power. The consumer decides uh, how he wants to see the brands, what he wants to know, how he wants to, to discover them. Digital, in fact, creates a, a relationship that has nothing to do with uh, what uh, existed before. But isn't it much more difficult, therefore, to control your brand? Yeah, but at the same time, it's more exciting and it, uh, it enriches the, the, the relationship. So now, uh, thanks to digital, uh, we can uh, communicate the content of our brands. We can uh, do tutorials to explain how the, the products work, how they should be used. We can have a personalized relationship with consumers. So it's, uh, it's a completely new dimension. It's, uh, it's much more uh, rich and, uh, and exciting. So what sells at the moment? Is, is it the luxury brands or is it the more consumer brands? This year, uh, luxury. This year, uh, luxury has been uh, booming everywhere, uh, mostly with uh, Chinese consumers. You know, Chinese consumers are fantastic. Uh, they love beauty, they love luxury, they love our brands and our business in, uh, uh, with Chinese consumers everywhere has been booming. L'Oréal's global reach stretches across 140 countries. About two-thirds of its sales are generated outside of Europe. Much attention has shifted to China, where strong demand for high-end lipstick and perfume is driving growth. In 2015, China surpassed France to become the group's second biggest market behind the United States. Some of the success is being attributed to selfies, with camera-conscious millennials buying more makeup than ever before to look good instantly. Have you had to adapt to the Chinese market? Yeah, in fact, the, the products we sell, not for all brands, because the luxury brands, for example, are the same uh, all over the world, of course, but for, for our mass brands like L'Oreal, like Maybelline, uh, the products that we sell in China are made in Ch formulated in China by Chinese, in our Chinese labs. Because of regulation? Not only, but also because uh, we want to create the products that are absolutely right for them, especially skincare, because their needs their skin, their aspirations are, are specific, are different. So we uh, formulate in our Chinese labs, we manufacture in our Chinese uh, factories, mm -hmm. and, uh, and L'Oréal now is the L'Oréal Paris is the number one beauty brand in China. I've also been reading that one of the most popular products is actually a homemade, I guess, range of cosmetics wear, which is favored by the wife of the president, President Xi. Yeah, it's a great brand, but uh, still the number one beauty brand in China, China the, the, the preferred beauty brand by Chinese women is L'Oréal. L'Oréal Paris, they call it uh, with the Chinese name, it's Pali Olaya, which is beautiful, by the way. And it's, uh, no, it's great because, you know, the L'Oréal Paris is the number, number one beauty brand for Chinese, for Americans, for uh, Europeans, for uh, Russians, uh, everywhere. So it's, uh, 
to great Not bad. satisfaction. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, not bad. So tell me about your success in China. Is it through distribution? Is it through ads? Is it through celebrities? What's the attraction for your brand by the Chinese? You know, the reason of success of our brands everywhere is always the same. It's uh, number one, quality. Uh, you know, we, 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 for all our brands, uh, the, our absolute priority is uh, the quality and the safety of our products. And it's something that the Chinese uh, respect a lot. It's very important for them. Uh, number one, innovation. Uh, innovation is extremely important. It's an industry where you have to innovate a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, more than 15% of our products every year are new mm -hmm. in order to keep uh, innovation uh, flowing very, uh, very strongly. Uh, it, of course, it's the uh, imagery of the, of the brands. You know, brands like uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, Lancôme, uh, Giorgio Armani, Laurel Paris. Uh, it's, uh, it's a beautiful imagery and Chinese consumers are, are very, uh, very sensitive to that. They, they like it. Is the U.S. tough, a tough market? The U.S. this year is a bit tougher, a bit softer, let's say. Uh, it's not really tough, but it's a bit softer, uh, certainly softer than, uh, than, uh, than China. But it depends. You know, last year were, the U.S. was very good. Mm -hmm. uh, so every year, it's, it's funny because every year the market roughly globally is more or less growing at 4%, but it's never made exactly the same way. But so how difficult is it to predict what, you know, what will work and what won't? Why am I using this mascara, not the other mascara? Why am I using this foundation, not the other? Again, it's very, you know, when you, when you know well your consumers, when you understand their desires, when you can guess their dreams or expectations, then you can really create uh, what, uh, what they will love. What will the next four years bring? Is there a specific market that you think will grow more? Is it, you know, for example, men's cosmetics or something else? You know, digital, I think, will be the, the most uh, important uh, element of transformation of the market. So definitely we're going to see uh, the e-commerce growing. For example, e-commerce in China is already more than 30% of our sales for our, our mass uh, market brand. So it's huge. So we're going to see digital uh, growing. Uh, we're going to see probably new channels also emerging, like uh, specialty stores, mm -hmm. our own stores. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, are very big in also... Uh, growing segment is the travel retail, you know, the mm -hmm. stores uh, in the airports, because more and more people are traveling. So I think there will be new channels. In terms of uh, regions, of course, the emerging markets are still growing and, uh, and our categories are growing too. Makeup has been booming for two or three years. And I think it's going to keep booming. Skincare is, is growing too. So uh, honestly, I'm very optimistic about the, the short term, middle term and long term perspective of this industry. What do you think you spend most of your innovation on? Is it, for example, making a lipstick that lasts longer? Is it kind of changing it a little bit? I know you have so many products, it's and, unfair. And a few secrets. And a few secrets, <laughs> but you can tell us, we're amongst friends. <laughs>
extremely fast, extremely strong. The company that invented the Platinum Blonde is constantly innovating and developing new products as consumer demand changes. At its lab in Paris, scientists have studied more than 7,000 types of hair and are now experimenting with 3D printing. The hope is to one day help people suffering from hair loss. L'Oréal has already created fake skin to avoid testing products on animals and invented a UV patch to monitor exposure to the sun's rays. We have the number one R&D uh, facilities in the world. We are spending uh, roughly 3.5% of our sales in, uh, in research and innovation. And obviously the, the most important topics are hair, skin. And, uh, and hair, this is where we invent and create uh, new formulations for uh, hair care, hair color, uh, all type of uh, hair products. You also have a, a, um, a patch? Yeah. Is that right? UV patch. A UV patch, so you yeah. put it on to see when you're overexposed to the sun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a creation that was made uh, two years ago that we presented at the Consumer Electronics Show in, in Vegas uh, last year. And it's a UV patch, you put it on your skin uh, and it's linked to your cell phone and uh, it uh, calls you or it uh, rings uh, when uh, your exposure to uh, UV has been too high. It's, uh, it's a fantastic tool. So do you think though there's going to be more of a trend, which I guess is, is between the cosmetics and the healthcare? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and also with internet, you know, this, uh, this, the, the, this triangle between uh, beauty, uh, health of uh, the skin or hair and an internet of things. Uh, is creating new opportunities and that uh, are going to be very useful for consumers. What do you like about your job the most? I love uh, understanding people. You know, uh, I think that uh, one of my uh, strengths is, uh, is the, the capacity of uh, empathy with consumers. So I have this capacity to, uh, to understand, to feel, to, to, to guess uh, what, uh, what consumers uh, want, uh, what is their desires sometimes their dreams, and, uh, and then to be able to formulate products that will respond to these dreams. Do you believe you have to take risks to innovate, or oh, yeah. actually, do you? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, because every innovation, by definition, is a bet. Uh, every launch is a bet. Uh, it's like a new film, or a new movie, or new uh, music. You, you never know in advance, uh, but that's, that's the, the, the magic of it. So what do you think you spend the, most of your innovation on? Is it, for example, making a lipstick that lasts longer? Is it kind of changing it a little bit? I know you have so many products, it's and, unfair. And a few secrets. And a few secrets, <laughs> but you can tell us, we're amongst friends. No, we are, we are working on, on all categories. You know, we have 3,500 uh, researchers uh, from many, many uh, departments, and they are all working on all types of cosmetics. Skin care, hair care, hair color, uh, old, uh, sun care. And uh, be because fundamentally, uh, as I told you, we really believe first and foremost in terms of uh, uh, efficacy and quality. So the, the, you know, the mission of, the, of the, the company, which is beauty for all, is also not only beauty for all, but the best of beauty, the, the best quality, the best performance, the best efficacy, the best safety, and that keeps us busy. 3,500 researchers. Yeah. How long does it take from, I don't know, who has a concept of, for example, a new product, until that product being on the shelf for someone to buy? Depends. can be very quick when the, when the, the formulation is easy. It can take uh, maybe uh, six months. Or uh, when, uh, when uh, for example, the marketing guy uh, has, a, has a vision, has a dream, uh, but uh, the labs don't know exactly how to formulate it, can take uh, two years, three years. Uh, really, really depends. Mega volume on top, mega volume on bottom. Share it with your friends and buy makeup instantly. One of the criticisms often leveled at the beauty industry is that it's only for young people. Is there any truth in that? No, not at all, of course not. Uh, first, that would be stupid because we are uh, addressing all needs uh, uh, for all people uh, and uh, look at our ambassadors. Uh, for example, uh, Jane Fonda, Ellen Mirren, uh, they are not millennials. So, uh, no, honestly not. Do you sell more to millennials or to people of, of a more certain age? No, we sell to everyone. Uh, it depends the brand. The brands, of course, some of our brands like uh, NYX, uh, Urban Decay, uh, are more targeting uh, young people. Uh, Biotherm or uh, L'Oreal Paris may, may target other, uh, 
other uh, categories of consumers, but uh, no, no, we cover the whole scope of consumers. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of age, in terms of diversity, uh, in terms of uh, countries, uh, Chinese, Brazilian, Europeans, uh, everyone. It's a beauty for all. So how do you uh, sell to the emerging markets? Uh, we adapt, um, we adapt uh, the, the, the products that we sell, of course. Uh, we make sure that uh, they are uh, affordable and that people can, uh, can buy them. Brazil, for example, is very interesting because Brazil is uh, the country in the world where the hair is uh, completely unique because it's such a mixed country in terms of uh, ethnic origins uh, that the blend is completely uh, amazing and that you have to create for Brazilian um, hair care products that are completely specific. And by the way, it's very interesting because sometimes they are, they, they are the most uh, uh, demanding consumers. And so when you can create in Brazil a product that is good for them, then you can make it for the world because it's going to be great for everyone. Do you think Generation X cares more about this than millennials? There is an urgency, uh, clearly. Uh, we are not talking anymore about uh, a potential threat. I mean, there is a clear and present threat. For Jean-Paul Agon, life at L'Oréal began in sales 39 years ago. He quickly understood the power of advertising. Read my lips. I'm worth it. The company obviously thinks it is worth it, spending more than $8 billion a year selling and marketing its brands. A third of that on digital media. When I was uh, 20 years old, I was in the business school, and at the end, uh, I, I knew I wanted to do marketing. And, uh, and for me, beauty is the supreme art of marketing. Because it's a marketing that is uh, not only about uh, understanding, analytics, but it's also about uh, emotion, guessing, creation. So I think it's a fantastic marketing. There is no better marketing than beauty marketing. And from that 20-year-old Jean-Paul Agon, what have you learned about yourself? My God, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> a lot, because it was a long time ago. Uh, no, it, you know, it, it took me, uh, you know, it took me uh, many years to. Uh, to, uh, to get where, uh, where I am today, uh, but I was always passionate. You know, the, I think the, 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 the incredible uh, part of L'Oréal also is that uh, every day is a, is a new adventure, every day is a passion, it's a, it's a company made of really passionate people, and every new mission is an adventure. So what are you like as a leader, micromanaging or overview? Uh, you know, I like overview, <laughs> and from time <laughs> to time I'm tempted to do micromanagement. But uh, when I do that, uh, uh, my team say, you know, Jean-Paul, you, <laughs> <laughs> you should not bother with that. Let us do it. D do you review, though, the end product every time? Or I'm not, how does it work? As much as, you know, I have meetings with, of course, with all the brands. Yeah. Uh, not all the times, of course. I uh, travel uh, in many, many countries around the world. And I'm just trying to... Uh, to help, uh, to uh, make sure that we are uh, going, uh, taking the right directions, uh, uh, pushing in the right, uh, the right innovations, uh, uh, understanding enough uh, the consumers we are dealing with, uh, trying to, to pilot uh, the ship. L'Oréal's Sharing Beauty with All program, launched in 2013, was designed to transform the business. Jean-Paul Agon was determined to make the company ethically and environmentally sustainable. It's been recognized for its efforts, awarded a AAA for water management, climate and action against deforestation. So when did you start thinking about sustainability? Pretty a uh, long time ago, you know, uh, uh, especially when I came back from the USA and, uh, and uh, I, I took over as a, as a CEO. Uh, I really understood at the time that uh, for a company like L'Oréal, especially because we are the leader of the beauty industry, uh, we had to make sure that also the, we would do the best and the, and the most uh, to make the, the, the planet a beautiful place. You know, what started it? Is it because you say we sell so much that we have to make sure that it doesn't go to waste? Or is it also because the consumers want something that's more sustainable? Or is it because the employees you hire want something more sustainable? Very good, very good points. I think it's all of that. 
first, because we have a moral duty. Uh, secondly, because it's what our employees are asking for. Uh, third, because it's what consumers want. Fourth, because it's the, what the, the society expects from a big company like us. So that's why we really, uh, we really went into this direction. D does it make a difference for the consumer? I remember you telling me maybe, well, a couple of years ago, that if a consumer has a choice of a sustainable shampoo or a shampoo that makes our hair better, we'll always go for the shampoo that makes our hair better. Yeah, but now what we want to do is to make a, a shampoo that makes the hair better and sustainable. Because now we, we uh, in fact, uh, you're right, our vision is that we should, we have to find a way that it's not uh, opposite, that it goes in the same direction. And it's the same for economic performance. You know, for example, the, the, the sustainability performance should not be opposite to the economic performance. And in fact, we are able to, uh, to prove that. For example, in the, in the past uh, 10 years, we reduced our, our carbon emission by 67% when at the same time we were able to increase our production by 30%. How do you do that? Uh, we, uh, we work a lot. Uh, we transform all our factories. Uh, we have now 10 uh, sites that are uh, carbon neutral. Uh, we completely transform the way also we uh, engineer with uh, water. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, what we call dry factories that they don't uh, use uh, water at all. They completely recycle the totality of the water that they use. Uh, we uh, eliminate waste, uh, so it's, uh, it's a very comprehensive effort on all fronts uh, to transform completely the way we produce, we distribute, etc. And shareholders are behind you every step of the way for sustainability? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They are very, I think that uh, our shareholders are very proud of what we do. Uh, I cannot say that they are pushing us hard to do it, but they are uh, happy and proud. Do you think Generation X cares more about this than Millennials? The younger you are, the more you think about this? I, I think that everybody now cares. You know, I think that it's, it's, uh, it's very well understood that there is an urgency, uh, clearly. Uh, we are not talking anymore about uh, a potential threat. I mean, there is a clear and present threat uh, to the planet. And, uh, and if we are not all doing uh, the maximum in the very short term, uh, it's going to be very difficult. So. I think that every generation now uh, understand that. If I speak to you in five years, what will be your story? In five years, uh, probably I will tell you that uh, the most important uh, mission uh, has been the transmission. Uh, because, uh, of course, I will not be CEO forever. Uh, and I'm, I will be, by the way, very glad to pass the baton one day to uh, my successor. So if you think a lot about succession, what kind of su successor would you like and what would you like your legacy to be? I will be proud uh, to have been able to uh, adapt Loyal uh, to the new world. I think that we are living in a, in, a, in a very special period. The world tomorrow will be very different from the world we knew uh, a few years ago and uh, and you know my absolute priority right now is to adapt transform the company in order to make it as successful as a leader as performant in the new world as it was uh, in the world before and i'm very confident about it because that that's what we are doing you know we are we are doing a, a, a cultural revolution a digital revolution a sustainability uh, revolution and so the loyal will be uh, will be a fantastic company. And, uh, and then uh, uh, someone else will, uh, will take the baton and will, uh, will drive the, the adventure uh, further. Jean-Paul Lagon, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.